In this video, we'll be covering Bitwig Studio's Ricochet Note Effect. And this is a really unique, quirky little device that it's hard for me to see where and when I would ever use this. But for those of you out here who do use this all the time, please write in the comments how you do work with it um, because I'm very curious. It's a really cool thing. Like it's cool that it exists. It's cool you can do this, but it's hard for me to see where I would ever work with it. So let's just quickly bring up the manual. And this first sentence basically explains what it does. Treats notes as bouncing balls in a room. When balls collide with each other or with the walls, a new note is triggered at that velocity. And that's what it does. And it says here it's useful for creating an algorithmic variation of your note clip, which is either reproducible if you're on the bar sync mode or new each time if you're on the random mode. Generating one shot timbre pan envelopes by using a big room spatialization and maximum damping. And so I'll show this off, but I can't really see why you would ever do this versus just using standard automation controls. So I don't see the benefit there. Going full Eno by setting a slow speed, triggering a non-sustaining sound, and holding down the sustain pedal. So I'd have to probably see somebody do this to see what effect exactly it's generating. Uh, triggering a non-sustaining sound and holding down the sustain pedal. Hmm. Okay, maybe I'll try to see if I can figure that out. And then the last one is creating a 90s style delay, but with note effects. I, I can't see why you would ever do something like this because you're going to have a really tough time keeping things on the grid when, again, like you could just use a regular delay effect, but you can do some kind of cool stuff. And I'll show you this concept and maybe how I would then try to work with it. But in an actual production, I would struggle. To, to figure out when and where to use this thing. So the first thing that I wanted to do before getting experimental is understand just like the nuts and the bolts and can I make something repeatable? So you can see the way I've set this up. I've set this exactly at four sides. I've set the ball launch mode to manual and at negative 45 degrees. So 45 degrees should be right in the middle. And so we should be bouncing off these walls just the, exactly the same way every single time. So our duration should be consistent. But how long is that duration? How do we get that to be perfect? I don't know. Um, we'll see what happens when we when we play this back out and generate it. But I put the ball damping to zero, so we're just going at the same speed every single time. I put the ball radius down to zero because this is the biggest variable that I don't know where to set it. But we're going to start at zero. And then I set the speed to be 100% because I'm thinking 100% is going to equal one bar. But then, you know, these other variables can slightly offset that. So let's just like watch this first before we see the uh, generated output. <laughs> And it's just going to do this forever. Now, you can imagine you basically change anything on here and you're going to get a unique effect. So what I could have done to even make this maybe better would have been like to change this to 45 degrees. And we'll just do it now in real time because we can and bring this ball launch to zero. So there you go. You got a square. And let's see, let's see the outcome of this. I'm, I'm very interested myself to see if it's going to be repeatable. I'm going to turn the sound on initial notes off so that we're not going to hear the first one that's just half the distance, but all the rest of them will then be the same. And I apologize, that noise is, is, is going to be a little annoying. Okay, and this actually looks really close for the sense that it, it almost just ended right at the end. Um, but if I go and I bring this in and I look at it, we can see that we have overshot slightly. And that little slight overshot also leads me to believe this isn't probably falling on the grid. And, you know, we're all the way down to 128th notes. So, I mean, what we could do, of course, if we were setting this up in more of the delay effect would be after the fact, go in here and just like quantize it. But then again, it's like, what's the point of doing that when you can just use like a standard delay, but or one of the other note effects, actually. But yes, we could go in here and just quantize this and do something like 16th notes and then see what kind of generates out and, and brought it back to right on that 1.3. Now we have something that's a little more manageable and repeatable. 
but we could throw off some of the other variables, quantize it, put it to 16th notes, and see what we get, essentially. So the thing I could try to now do is say, okay, well, we saw what happened there, and it was a little bit too long, right? Or maybe it was too short. I don't know. But basically, I'm going to change the ball radius. Let's put it to 0.05 and see if that gets us a little bit closer to our just one bar that we're going for. Because these will trigger a little more frequently because the ball is a little bit bigger in, in size. And let's see what we got. Ooh, look how close we are. So we got very, very close there. Obviously, the final thing we could do is take it all the way up to full size and just see what happens. My brain is like fighting with me to tell you what's going to happen in advance. I kind of know, but I need to see it. <laughs> These are going to happen more rapidly. as you can see there. And again, we are off, off that grid. So this is just a very basic way of kind of looking at it, but um, keep in mind this, that you know I'm trying to do something here and it's like not really working for me. All right, so now that we've kind of done our experiment of trying to find something a little more practical, Let's now look at some of the different options in here and see how we can do some different things. So we have the different ball launch modes. So one of them is bar sync, one of them is manual, and one of them is random. Random is probably the most fun. So like if I play a bunch of notes at once, they're all just gonna kind of come from the center and go to different locations. hear that like so if we use bar okay this is circling around to the grid to the beat so if i play something like right at the top like let's just go over here and just play Was like super good and I could play like right on the beat I'd be able to kind of shoot stuff off like exactly where I want to shoot it especially if I have like unique um, you know room sides and stuff like that so that's the way that bar works that's really if you kind of already have a pattern you know that you've played in and you want to then use this I think that's where it's most useful and then we have random which is a lot of fun so each note is gonna kind of go somewhere different and so if like you did have a complex chord and you had the um, speed to like really slow and we had this down a little bit, you could do something pretty cool. In terms of how those are gonna interact, when they're gonna bounce off of each other. And again, if you have the um, room doing something different or you have that being automated or you change the room rotation or have that being automated you can just imagine the different timings that you're going to get it's stuff that you would never think to do yourself um, but that can be sometimes part of the problem too right because if it's something you never thought to do yourself it probably isn't going to be super musical all the time unless you are doing something that's like arrhythmic or very ambient and then you could see you know probably a little bit more um, value in it. Um, the next thing that I wanted to show is how we can use the spatialization to do what they were talking about in um, the documentation. So I'm going to put the spatialization all the way up. I'm going to go back to here, and I have the timbre set onto this filter. And let's just watch to see what happens. And it's going to come down. 
So the timbre, if you have that set to different things, is working on this y-axis. And the panning is working on the x-axis. So if we take this to, I guess it needs to be 90 degrees. My math is so bad. <laughs> we'll be able to hear it now go left and right. But now nothing is happening. Let's bring this back to 100% so we can just go faster. So this is what they were talking about in kind of creating interesting like sweep effects. And all of that data is actually going to be contained within the note. Um, so I guess I can show that to you. Let's uh, go ahead and maybe use random and I just want to record out of both well actually this should work fine because random is going to shoot it probably not at one of those exact right positions okay so here's where we should see both happening especially as it comes back up In theory, this then should play out exactly as we heard it. And then we just want to go in here and ex inspect the node inspect um sorry, node expression stuff. And we can see that timbre line for each of the notes. This is just very cool. And also that panning line here. And so imagine you have a very complicated shape or things are rotating, things are moving. You've set timbre to a lot of different parameters. You're going to get just a lot, a lot of variation just from your note clips. Again, when are you ever going to do that? I don't know, but it is an option for you. Now, the other features are actually all pretty straightforward. Um, and not in terms of what the sound is going to be, but in terms of what they do. So we can adjust the number of sides here, and then obviously that's going to play a big role in how things are bouncing around and interacting. We can change the rotation, same idea there. And then the other things we've kind of already talked about, except for the damping. So damping is like, okay, we're going to add some kind of a material to this wall, and it's going to slow it down after it hits the wall, like it's absorbing some of the energy. And if you set that to 100%, what will happen is it's going to get to the wall and just stick there. And I don't think then you can like, well, that was weird. I don't think anything's going to bounce off, but I do wonder if it then hits one of those balls, if it will stop sooner. Let's see. I'm not, I'm actually not really sure, but it's a cool effect. This is actually one of the cooler effects and sometimes it doesn't work. So yeah, that's how the damping works. And obviously you could bring that back down. I, I don't think if you automate this over time, like if then suddenly if it hits another ball, it's gonna move again. Let's say, having a hard time getting stuff stuck. Oh, it will. Wow. Okay, so that's actually really cool. So that's something to consider. Like you could automate that parameter at some point and then let it start to, to start moving again and start bouncing around. So that's how the damping works. We've looked at the radius already. We know what that's doing. Do some kind of a UFO effect just visually. And then we also have the speed. But the real power in this would be to automate some of these things. And, and maybe you actually automate those at more of a, a reasonable value. But And by reasonable, I mean like to time. But again, like I feel like nothing is ever really going to be in time because all of these other variables are kind of playing off of that. 
So it's just a really, really cool effect and something to experiment with for fun, but to actually use, I'm not so sure. The final thing I just wanted to show is that you can also use a node effects layer to try to use this like a little bit more like a delay effect. So our first layer is just coming through normal. But if we turn this on then for the ricochet, I have it again turned off so that it won't play a repeat of the note, but we'll then hear. Let's bring, let's bring the, uh, the, the speed up a decent amount. Let's bring the damping up a decent amount. Really, I actually want the damping to be like, let's let's put it to like 75% or something like that. Because eventually I want them to stop or really hit each other at rare times. It's just, it's just a wild one. So you can also set it up like this if you really, really wanted to. Um, and then you have, again, more of like a delay effect that's happening. And you, again, could kind of automate some stuff, put some of this onto um, timbre, onto some features. And I just want to do it very quickly. Okay, good enough for me, and let's hear what happens now. Kind of play asteroids if you really want to. So um, that is the ricochet effect in a nutshell. I think we really covered everything. And it's just a matter then of how you want to try to use it. And again, I encourage anybody who does use this, please share in the comments how you do it. Or if there's other YouTube videos out there where people do creative things with this, like in a musical sense, please share it. Um, I'm just fascinated to learn more. But thank you for watching, and I hope everybody has a fantastic day. Take care.